seen a fair bit of praise for Wilson's clubs on this channel of late. Can this new D9 iron keep those positive vibes rolling? D9 has strategically planned urethane power holes in the sole of the club. This apparently is going to keep up ball speeds across the face by allowing that face to flex as much as possible and apparently has a sweet spot that you can't miss. We'll be putting that to the test later. This also features the lowest centre of gravity of any club Wilson has ever made. This should increase launch angles, increase descent angles, which should give us more control on the shots coming into the green. And it has all the game improvement features that you want concealed in a player's iron aesthetic. Not quite sure whether I agree with that one. The D9 has a fairly thick top leading edge, which should inspire some confidence. And it's got a fair amount of offset as well, which presumably is there to try and close the club face because most people have the club face open. And you'll be pleased to learn that there's quite a lot of hitting surface as well from the heel to the toe, which should make this club quite forgiving. This seven iron that I've been sent has a whopping 27 degrees of loft. For the shaft, we've got a KBS Max Ultralight and a grip from Lampkin, which does make me laugh. They've managed to call the most bland, featureless grip the Genesis. So now we know pretty much everything we need to know about the D9, we need to find out whether it'll actually deliver on its promises. Let's fire up the sim, let's find out. So to give this test some context, I'm going to bring in my current 5 iron, which actually has the same loft as this D9 7 iron. But it does have very different design characteristics. It's got a higher centre of gravity, it doesn't have the urethane speed slots, the head certainly isn't as big, so it'll be interesting to see how it compares to this D9. So the first claim that I'm going to test is the higher launch, higher descent angle with the Wilson D9. Again, these two clubs do share the same loft, but does the lower centre of gravity in the D9 create that higher launch, higher descent angle? Let's find out. So in that first test, we did see that the D9 did launch a little bit higher, two degrees higher, so it's not massive, but it is there. And the descent angle with the D9 was three degrees steeper as well. So again, not huge, but it is there. It does confirm Wilson's claims. And that then translated into slightly different rollout between these two clubs once the ball had landed. We had six feet of extra roll with my Cobra in the core situation. In a dry situation, hitting out onto a driving range, it was only down to three feet. So again, there is a difference in these two golf clubs. It's just not huge. But if you're a player that struggles to get the ball airborne in this sort of 27 degree range, then this is certainly something worth trying. I ran a separate test to see if there's any truth in the claims that there was more ball speed coming from this D9 over, say, my club because of these speed slots in the bottom. Again, I did find that there was 1.46 was the smash factor on average with this Wilson D9 as opposed to 1.43 with mine. 
and just for the sheer hell of it, I conducted another test as well with off-center strikes. I purposely hit the golf ball out of the toe of the club, both with the D9 and with the Cobra, to see if the ball speeds were actually retained a little bit more with this D9. My five irons efficiency dropped to 1.40, whereas the D9 dropped to 1.42. Well, there was a slightly greater drop in the efficiency with the D9, 1.46 to 1.42, as opposed to the 1.43 to 1.40 with the Cobra. But all in all, all of the things that Wilson are claiming did come true in my test. But does that mean you should run out and buy a set? If you want them to hit your seven iron past your pals, stop watching this video right now, get yourself online and just buy a set. The D9s are also going to appeal to the sort of mid to lower skilled level player that's looking to get the ball up in the air just that little bit easier. And as much as I don't fully agree with Wilson's claim that this has a player's aesthetic, it's not actually a bad looking club all around. So if you're in the market for a set of irons with these kind of playing characteristics and you're looking for something that's just a little bit cheaper than the sort of higher end product, this D9 iron is definitely worth having on your radar. But if you're a mid to high end skilled player and you're looking for something with classic looks, classic feel and classic performance, this is probably one to avoid. But I certainly wouldn't discount the Wilson brand altogether. I'd certainly check out the CB Forged Irons. I did a review just recently on those. There's a link in the description of this video for that review video. As always, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share. Please subscribe to the channel as well while you're here. You know where that red button is. And until next time, get those dirty shoes cleaned. We're gonna be on the course soon.